And now for more Gridiron Live from Wild Wing Cafe in City Market. Welcome back to Gridiron Live, as always, live right here in the heart of City Market at Wild Wing Cafe. We're now joined by Savannah State head football coach Ernest Wilson III. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, let's start it off. You knew it was going to be a, a rough a rough uh, start to your season. You came in kind of late. I mean, talk about this first year and how you think it went. You know, it, it was kind of tough. Uh, we started out, um, you know, like you said, coming in late. I signed on June 7th. Really didn't start the wheels in motion till July 1st. Coaches came in July 23rd. Players came in July 30th. So it was kind of a tough way. But, uh, you know, we got together as the season went on. I'm lay, laying down a foundation to be able to build a team that will compete for a national championship. Now, if you look at the record, if you're a Savannah State fan, I've been going to these games for two years now. The record maybe doesn't show up, but these some of these losses were very close, and that's something maybe good to see if you're a Savannah State fan. Talk about some of the positives that you saw out of this year. There was a lot of positives. Our young men came out. They, they worked every day. That was the first positive. They, they knew that they had been behind. They did not have a strength program. They did not have a classroom setting that they could uh, be able to learn and grow and build on. And uh, we were able to take some things in the program and build it and, and mold it. And the young men have just been working hard. They're very positive. And after the game on Saturday last night, they said, hey, we're going back to work on Monday. So that's one big positive. Of course, the season comes to an end uh, yesterday with a loss at North Carolina A&T. And now they say, for the most part, the work really begins. Now you guys are out hitting that recruiting trail and, again, spreading the word of Savannah State and all that, the good things that are going on there. And, and talk about it. So many good things going on. And I know you guys got your eyes on a lot of local talent, really trying to tap into what we have right here in Georgia and North Florida and, and in South Carolina. And, and that's kind of going to be where that foundation is laid, getting there and getting the weight room, the classroom, and do right. Basically, that's the big thing you, uh, that you're stressing is, is come to school, do right, play football, and everything else is going to work out. That's right. We uh, Right now, we have 24 local players offered. Uh, most people don't know that in and around Savannah mainly. We're not too concerned about outside of our state, but even though we do have some players, we have five committed to us, and uh, we look to have two more tomorrow. I can't tell you who they are, <laughs> but we look to have two more committed. We meet with the parents tomorrow. But we're excited about that because we want to bring the local talent here. We know we can develop them now. I got a first rate uh, strength coach. We got a first rate, Frank's first uh, rate uh, coaching staff. So I'm really excited about it. I think we're ready to work and the players are ready to work. And as long as we can bring that uh, great talent, local talent here, hey, we're going to win games. I mean, that's, what, uh, that's what's been so cool about you guys is the entire staff see you guys out almost every Friday night here locally when you guys have a chance. When, uh, when you got to go on the road, you got to go on the road. But when you guys are at home or, or Ken, you guys are out there supporting the local high school athletes and just really stressing to them, uh, hey, come be part of Savannah State, come be part of uh, the future. And it's got to be an exciting time. It is an exciting time. I'm taking a, a little map from uh, Boise State. Boise State was able to do it and build from within and build within the local town. Uh, we look at some other major schools they're building from within. So that's what I'm trying to do, not only build within my players, but within this local area. And I know that we, hey, there's some big players in this area, and we did not have a lot of size. But yet it's out here on the high school program. So, hey, let's go get it done right here locally. And as you said, trying to get build this team, and, it, and a lot of the work starts now, but what are you really hoping for to see next year, to see, you know, coming up soon here for Savannah State? Well, my goal is uh, always to win the National Championship. We want to be a, a turnaround team. Right now, North Dakota State is ranked number one in the country. The year before, uh, the, the sec their second National Championship was last year, but the year before, they were 3-8. and eight. So I believe that we can turn this around. I, can believe, I believe that we can turn around a lot faster than people know because we schematically we can hang with the teams. It was the depth wise, it was uh, maybe some weaknesses on, on our starting units that wasn't that well, that was not as good. But hey, they got experience and now if we can bring in some other players that's better, hey, it's going to be great. I tell you what, when you're out doing the recruiting and you're talking to mamas and daddies and, and having the chance for their sons to, to play here close to home where, where they can be seen here and, and have that comfort zone, and then you take a look at the schedule, the always tough MEAC conference schedule. You guys have so many big games in the MEAC with the Bethune-Cookmans and the FAMUs, of course all the schools up in North Carolina. Then you throw in your non-conference schedule, and I don't think there's anybody in the country that plays a tougher non-conference schedule than Savannah State, especially over the last two years we start talking about Florida State. Uh, 
Miami and Oklahoma State. And I mean, it's just you guys play Troy this year. Uh, you guys really beef up and, and kind of give these guys a chance to showcase their showcase their skills on a national stage. Yes, and that's true. Uh, we were playing. And I'm, I'm already playing last night when I got back. The first thing I pulled out pulled up was Middle Tennessee State. Okay, uh, this time I'm, I'm working to beat, beat these guys. I do not want to just go play against them. Uh, schematically, we felt like we had some, we outdid some things last year, but we just didn't have the players. So that's what we're looking to do. But uh, when we're selling our young men or selling recruits now, what we're talking about, hey, you're not only playing a 1A schedule, but you're playing a 1AA, or as they, the young people call it, FBS and an FCS schedule. So we're trying to get it done, and we want, we want you to understand that Savannah State is our Division One team here in Savannah. Very good. Ernest Wilson the third wrapping up his first season at the helm of the Savannah State Tigers. Big things on the horizon right. things over coming. at Savannah State. <laughs> Big things coming for sure for the Tigers. And as you said, he's got to get back to work. He's got film to look at. He's got recruiting to do. So we'll let him get out of here, but you're going to want to stick around. We've got a lot more Gridiron Live coming up. We're going to take a look at some of the big players from this week. And there are possibly our new Edmark Player of the Week. So you're going to want to stick around. A lot more coming up. Stay right here. Gridiron Live from Wild Wing Cafe in City Market will be right back.